Hey, what's up everyone? In today's video, we're going to see how we can patch the ID of a SharePoint item into an list as a lookup column. We're going to see how this can be useful and hopefully a couple of tips along the way. Let's do it. I'm in a SharePoint site where I have two lists events and cancelled events. In the events list, I have the ID column for the item, the title, which is the built-in column in SharePoint. This is a single line of text, the event description, multiple line of text, and for simplicity, the country is also a single line of text. But you could make that a choice column if you wanted to. If we go into the cancel events, I have the title column, the country and the reason for cancellation. The idea here is when I create an entry for a cancelled event, I grab the ID of the event and have it as a lookup column in the cancel events list. And for that, we're going to need to create a column. So click on add column. This is going to be a lookup column. Click next. We're going to give it a name. I'm going to call that original item ID, but you can name that whatever you want. Just make sure it's descriptive. The type is going to be lookup. The source list is going to be events and the column is going to be the ID. Click save. And now the column has been created. If we now go into the app, I have an app with three screens. We're going to build on top of this app in future videos. But for now, I have a home screen with two buttons, a new event and canceling events. And if I go into the new event screen, I have a form where the data source is the events list. I have the title, the event description and the country. And if I go into the cancel event screen, I also have a form with the title, the country and the reason for cancellation. Because I've added a column in SharePoint, I'm going to refresh my data source. And currently those three fields are text. And it makes sense for the reason for cancellation, but it might not make sense for the title and the country. And there are a couple of reasons for that. If I'm a user and I want to cancel an event, I might not know the name of the event. And also if this is a text input, you may have some typos, for example. So we're going to change that. I'm going to select the field, make sure that your data card is unlocked and then click on delete. I'm going to remove any references to the old control. Then make sure that your data card is selected. Click on insert and we're going to insert a combo box. I'm going to rename the combo box and we're also going to change the country. We want this to be a label. Make sure that the data card is selected. Click on insert and we are going to insert a text label. Going to rename the label. Now let's go back to the title and for the title, what I want to appear in here is all the items that the user who's logged into the app has created. So for example, I do not want the user to be able to delete any of the events created by somebody else. So before we enter the formula in here, we are going to create a collection. So I'm going to go back to the screen itself. And I'm going to create my collection on the unvisible property of that screen, because in my case, I do not need to have the data available anywhere else or at any time. So on the unvisible property, we're going to do a clear collect. I'm going to call that call all events created. And the source is going to be the events list. Now, because I've created that collection on the unvisible property of that screen, 
I only need to change screen and go back for the collection to be populated. So I'm going to play the app, just go back to another screen and come back to the canceling event screen. And now if I look at my collection, I can see it's populated. For the title field on the items property, I'm going to filter my collection by the user who's created the items because I do not want the user who's logged into the app to be able to delete any other events. So we're going to use the filter. We're going to filter the collection where the created by dot email is equal to the user who's logged into the app. And now I want the title, which is my column name here. And as you can see, I only have the four items that I've created myself. Now let's go to the country field and for the text property, we're going to do a lookup on the collection where the value selected in the title field is in the title in our list and I want the country. So let's make sure that the country is not multi-select and then let's test this out. I'm going to choose the bus tour. This is in Ireland. If I look at my list, I can see that the bus tour is in Ireland. Let's do the Statue of Liberty. This is in the United States and I can see this is United States. Now we can see that the title is mandatory in here with the red star. And so I would want that my cancel event button is disabled if this is empty. Click on the button and we're going to go into the display mode. And instead of edit, we're going to say if the combo box is blank, then the display mode should be disabled, otherwise edit. Let's try it. And we can see that the button is disabled because my field is blank. If I choose something, this is enabled. Now it's going to be time to patch our event. Click on the button, go on to the on select property. And we're going to use the patch function. Our source is going to be the canceled event list. And let's start with the title. This is going to be our combo box dot selected dot title. We have the country. And for the country, we can reuse what we have here. So go back to the country field. We're going to grab the formula and paste it. Then we have the reason for cancellation. And this one is going to be our data card. So data card value eight. Dot text. And now it's time to patch the ID. And remember that the ID is a lookup column. So we get the name of our column. We open curly braces and we have three pieces of information we need to enter. We need to have the O data type. We need to have the ID and we need to have the value. So for the O data type, this is something we probably won't remember, but it is necessary. So I will post it in the description of the video. So you can just copy paste. Then we have the ID and the ID at this point should be a number. And what we can do is get the value of the title like we did before. And we actually use a formula to get the country which will be almost the same. So I'm just going to grab the first bet, insert in the ID, 
And at this point, we do a lookup on the collection where the value selected is in the title. We're going to close the lookup and we're going to take the ID. As you can see, this is available. And the last piece is going to be the value. And the value should be text. And basically, we need the same number, but as text. So I'm going to grab this formula, which gives us the number. Copy here. And now I'm going to use the text function. And if I forget a comma, this is not going to work. All right. So now it's working. And you can see for the ID, we have three. If I just highlight everything in here, we can see the number three, which is a number. And then the value is three as well. But this time the data type is a text. And at the end, after submitting, just for good measure, we can just navigate to the home screen and reset the form. Let's try it. Let's choose the bus tour. And the reason for cancellation, we can probably say bad weather. And then once we click on canceling event, this has been submitted. I just go into the console events and refresh. We can see that the item has been created. The bus tour was ID one. The bus tour was ID one and I can click on the original item ID and I would have the information from the events list. Let's try another one. So for example, we are going to take the card tournament. Canceling events. All good. Let's close this. Go back here. Refresh. And this time we have ID number three. If we click on it, we have the information from the events list. All right. I hope this video has been useful and I will see you in the next one.